Well, still to come, a San Diego-based national nonprofit honors women with ovarian cancer for Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. We will hear from the executive director of Clarity to hear what's, what, who, or I guess we're going to find out who's your teal woman. I've got to ask about that. For the program's all about what it's all about. We'll uh, have that conversation when we come back, right after these short but important commercial words. Welcome back to Good Morning San Diego. The sun's still coming up at 641. Clarity, a San Diego-based national ovarian cancer nonprofit organization, is accepting nominations for its Who's Your Teal Woman recognition program. Here to tell us more about that program is the executive director of the nonprofit, Hillary Thiexton. Good morning to you, Hillary. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me on this morning. It's great to talk to you. Well, I wanted to do this interview. Uh, like a lot of folks, ovarian cancer w is in my life. Uh, I lost a uh, dear aunt to it many years ago. So it's an important topic. And uh, I wanted to get your take on uh, Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. What is the program? Who's your teal woman? What does it mean to be a teal woman? Well, you know, the way we define teal women is anyone who's been impacted by an ovarian cancer diagnosis. So uh, survivors um, and uh, women that we've lost to the battle. So um, what we're asking for is in recognition of women who've been impacted by the diagnosis for our community to nominate uh, women in their lives um, and uh, so that we have a chance to recognize them um, and, uh, and and help raise awareness and, uh, and bring a little bit of visibility. You know, a lot of times uh, women who are battling this disease feel like they're a speck of teal and a sea of pink. Uh, we hear that a lot from uh, from survivors of ovarian cancer. So we're trying to help women feel seen and supported in our community. All right. So I lost my aunt about 20 years ago, and back then oh, the survival so sorry. the survival rates were not good. In fact, in a lot of ways, it was a death sentence. Has that changed? You know, what I like to tell people is that uh, survival rates, you know, a lot of times we cite 10 year survival rates and by definition, those are 10 years out of date. And there have been some encouraging new treatments, um, but you know, we still, progress is not coming fast enough. Uh, we definitely need um, better personalized treatment, uh, more tumor testing um, and, uh, and definitely new drugs. Earlier detection is important. Um, and most women are still diagnosed at late stage. That has not changed uh, significantly. There's still no early screening test for ovarian cancer. And that's a really important thing for people to realize and appreciate that when they have symptoms that are concerning, um, they can include bloating, abdominal pain, changes in urinary frequency or urgency. But it's really important if you feel something's wrong to, um, to persevere and advocate for yourself. Um, so that's that's a really important message I think for our community um, is to be a strong advocate for yourself and if you notice changes to take them seriously well, yes because the, as you mentioned by the time you find out you're you have this dreaded disease it's some often too late as in the case of many including my aunt Marge uh, she tried everything I mean I got I, I admire she, you know she was a fighter right to the very last day so what is going on now in the way of treatments that maybe 20 years ago were just still experimental or what are the effective treatments now yeah so um, there have been some uh, important advancements that uh, that have been made um, uh, PARP inhibitors are a really important class of drugs that have emerged probably since your aunt was diagnosed um, um, and I think we're doing a much better job trying to personalize treatment based on tumor biology, right? Not all cancers behave the same, not all of them um, grow in the same way or are sensitive to the same kinds of drugs. So we're really trying to understand each individual uh, patient's uh, unique tumor type and trying to match with them with the drugs that will work most effectively for them. So it's becoming less of a random selection. Uh, we still have a lot of work to do on that front. It's it's, it's not, um, you know, it's, we're not testing 100% right. of right. Uh, women with ovarian cancer. 
Clinical trials are also an encouraging option for, uh, for a lot of women who have ovarian cancer. All of the new drugs that are going to become the future standard of care treatments are being tested in clinical trials today. And that's something that Clarity helps uh, patients and caregivers to identify clinical trials that might be a really effective treatment option for them. So that's an important thing to consider too if you're considering like your aunt did. What are all of the possible right. options that I have available to me. All right, so for more information, clarity.org. For people who want to nominate, where do they go as we wrap this up, Hillary? You, you can go to our website, clarity.org, and uh, there's a whole section on all of the events that we're having in September. Thanks for um, the shout out for our Teal uh, Woman event on the 18th. That's going to be at the Grand Del Mar. And then we're having a virtual celebration so folks can join us for, from around the country. Uh, that's on September 22nd, and we'll be honoring uh, teal women and uh, and featuring a lot of their stories. So hope that you can join for that. All the information is available on our website. So we'd love for you to check it out. Well, thank you so much for getting up early and being part of this. And thank you for all the information. Keep fighting the fight. Thanks so much. Really appreciate you uh, helping us to raise awareness and uh, really appreciate the support of KUSI. All right, cool. All right, coming up.